Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. I'm here today to teach you how to make this adorable messenger bag. This is a great bag for everyday use. It's nice and lightweight. It has good body to it, a little bit of light padding in there. And my favorite feature is the extended strap, which allows me to wear the bag so that it falls right at my hip. It's really comfortable. This wide strap is just great. Now, the other nice feature about this bag is you could use a very um, classic print for the exterior, but then let yourself have a little fun on the inside. I chose this awesome animal print by Michael Miller, and it's just happy. It's like a little bit of happy inside my bag. So I wanted to give you the finished measurements for this project at the base. The bag measures 11 inches. It is, it should be anyways, four inches deep and eight inches tall. And then this strap is probably 19, 20 inches long because that's usually what fits on me good. So shall we get started? Okay, so for this project, for the exterior, I've selected a um, twill fabric that's by Premier Prints, and it's a little thicker, and I have backed that with one piece of quilt weight batting for each panel. There's two panels, and they measure 12 inches high by 16 inches across. I have also positioned one piece the soft side of um, some hook and loop tape. And this piece of tape measures eight inches. And I've positioned that at the center of the front panel, approximately four inches from the top. And I'm just gonna begin by stitching across the top and the bottom edge of that hook and loop tape. I will reinforce with a back stitch at the beginning and the end to make sure that that's secured nice and tight. If you like, rather than breaking your thread, you can just continue right down the side until you reach the bottom. And then notice I'm pivoting with the needle down in the fabric. soft side of my hook and loop tape to the exterior panel and that's how the bag's gonna close. Then I have one more exterior panel that's the same measurements 12 inches high by 16 inches wide and I've also lined that with one piece of quilt weight batting in the same measurement. Now I'm going to position both of those panels right sides together lining up the corners and the base then I want to stitch down the side, across the bottom, and back up the other side. I'm going to leave the top open. And I am going to use a back stitch to reinforce at the beginning and the end. And this is approximately 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I've stitched all the way around. I just want to double check and make sure that I've captured all four layers. That's two layers of fabric and two layers of batting in the seams, and I have. So now I want to give the bag a little bit of depth by creating a gusset at the bottom, and this is also called a fat corner, and you're just going to align that base seam with the side seam to fashion 
a little point there at the end. And this is going to be a fairly narrow bag. I only want to create four inches of, of um, depth. So if you don't trust your eye to sew a straight line, you can just take a ruler and mark across there with a little pen and stitch straight across to create this four inch depth. You'll reinforce with a back stitch at the beginning and the end. I'm going to repeat the same process for the other side so that I have two corners. to the right of that stitch line. And repeat that for the other side. And now our exterior is complete. I'll turn that right side out so you can see those corners turned out beautiful. See how the side seam and the base seam is aligned? Very nice. And we have the hook and loop tape attached to the front. We just want to fold this in approximately three quarters of an inch. And you can kind of press that with your hand. You're also welcome to put a few pins in it to hold those layers. Set this aside and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. And now we need to craft the interior. For this, I selected this really fun Michael Miller animal print. It's adorable. I dug it out of my archives, so I'm not sure if it's still in print, but it sure is fun. And those are the, the interior panels measure the same as the exterior, 12 inches tall by 16 inches wide. There is no batting. You certainly could put batting if you need some extra um, padding or protection. I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those without batting and stitch down the side, across the base, and back up the side, reinforcing with the back stitch at the beginning and the end. Same seam allowance, very important, 5 eighths of an inch. I've captured both layers in the seam and now I need to create the depth in the interior. So I'm going to line the base seam with the side seam and I'm going to measure four inches across. along that line reinforcing with the back stitch at the beginning and the end. I'm going to repeat the process for the other side. Thank you. 
stitch just to the right of that stitch line, stitch rather, cut just to the right of that stitch line. And now the interior is complete. So cute. These animals are going to make me happy. I love the colors too. It's great for fall and back to school. Very fun. Okay. So I folded this outer edge over approximately three quarters of an inch. And now I want to fit this interior lining into the exterior, which we set aside. I'm going to get that inside there and begin by aligning the two side seams first. And if you have a little bulk there, just open up that exterior seam and fold that back so that it's distributed evenly. Pin the side so that's secure and then go ahead and flip over to the other side and get that lined up so you definitely don't want your sides wonky. Okay now both sides are aligned and now it's just a matter of aligning the tops and I always start from the middle I kind of walk my fingers in and put a pin in the middle on each side and then this is a smaller bag so I probably only need one pin in between the side and the center super cute in there and poke out those corners so everything's nice. Very, very fun. Stands up pretty good too on its own, which is great. That's because of the cool batting and the heavier fabric that I chose for the exterior. So we'll set that aside and now we need to craft the messenger flap which is made from one piece of the interior cotton, one piece of the exterior twill, and one piece of batting. Both pieces, or all three pieces rather, measure 12 by 16, just like the panels that we've already worked with. And what I wanna do is fold this in half, all the layers, so I have the two pieces of fabric right sides together and one piece of quilt batting and I want to fold those in half and I'm just going to angle this a little bit from the base over let's say from the top of that measure in actually we want these animals going the right direction so I'm going to measure from this top corner in approximately two and a half inches. You could go a little more, it's just gonna give you more of a slope on your flap, but I feel like two and a half inches is a good angle on that. So the two and a half is at the base and then that's gonna meet at the top corner. And then if you need, you can trim that up with a pair of scissors. That's the excess, which I'm going to discard. And now I have created this great angle on this messenger flap, which I want to show you. So now I'm going to stitch from that top wider edge down the side across the more narrow base and back up that side. I want to leave the top open. I'm going to use a back stitch to reinforce at the beginning and the end. Okay. I'm just going to 
going to make sure I've captured all three layers. It looks very good. And I do want to trim away the excess fabric just a smidge to the right of that stitch line. So we're going to flip this right side out and it's going to become the flap and then we're going to top stitch it so we just don't want an extra, a lot of extra bulk in there in that seam. If you like, you can press this. Mine still looks pretty good, so I don't think I have to press it. There's the other side, it's very cute. So now I just want to top stitch all the way around that to add detail. And it will structurally too, as you use the bag or if you need to wash it, it will add a little more structure to the stitching as well. hook and loop tape. This is the rougher edge. And we want to center that and attach it approximately an inch and a half from that shorter edge, the nice finished shorter edge of that flap. And I'm just going to put a pin in either end. I'll have to remove that as I sew. But I do want this to be nice and straight because you are going to see the stitches on the other side and I have found that if this tape is not straight, um, it's just really um, a you know, distraction to the eye here. So you might also want to double check your measurements and just make sure. So I'm getting about an inch and a half from the bottom there and an inch and a half there. is a little shorter than that one, so I'm just going to bump it over a smidge. across the bottom and across the top and reinforce with the back stitch at the beginning and the end. You want to stitch really close to the edge on this so that your needle and thread don't get tied up in these little rough hooks. If you look closely, you'll notice there's a tiny edge that doesn't have any hooks. That's where you should be stitching. Position this flap. We have this open raw edge that we're going to position in between the interior and the exterior layers of our bag. 
The easiest way to do that is going to be to flatten the bag. Oh, I forgot these little threads. Alright, when you flatten the bag, then position the hook and loop tape together. Get that as straight as you can so it's pleasing to the eye. You don't want to sew your flap on crooked. And then stand that up. And when you flip it over, remove the pins from the back. And then you will gently tuck that raw edge inside of the back of the bag. And you can tell, you know, that it's not crooked by looking at the pattern. And if you use a, a cutting mat, you can measure that and see. If it is crooked, please fix that now. You're going to reach in with your hand and capture all those layers with a pin. Just so nothing shifts. We're going to open it up and double check, but we don't want anything to shift when we pick this up. Okay, so I think I have both layers captured with a pin. And I'm just going to open that up. And then when that flap folds backwards, I can continue to feel with my hands. And I can, I'm can i feeling for the outer edge and the inner edge. And they should be very close to being aligned. And I'm just going to work across that and position a couple of pins so nothing shifts or is missed when I stitch all the way around this. So I have four pins in the back and it feels good. So I'm going to go with that. And the last thing that we have to do before we can attach this flap and enjoy our bag is craft the strap. This is a nice, long, wide messenger strap. And to create this, you're going to need a continuous cut of material, which measures eight inches wide. And this strap is very, very long. Let me tell you. is 27 on the half so that's 54 inches in length which is going to allow me to wear that completely crossbody and the bag is going to hang very low on my hip so eight inches by 54 inches and to craft the strap you're going to fold that fabric in half press the entire distance open that up and fold the raw edges in to meet on that center press line and then press the folded edges over and align those and press one more time. I did insert approximately 12 inches up a strip of quilt batting that is four inches wide by approximately 22 inches long. I just want padding on that part that's going to come across my body. I don't need a whole bunch of padding on the part that's going to be inserted into the bag because that's going to create a lot of bulk. So just put a little bit of padding, to, you know, approximately across three quarters of your strap. Now I'm going to close that all back up and I want to stitch down both sides. I'm going to begin with the open edge and then I'm going to come along the other side to create a really awesome strap. Okay, we've got a nice, wide, thick, padded strap ready to go. And we have to insert that on the sides in between the exterior and the interior layers. Just a smidge in front of where that flap starts. 
and I put my strap tail in there about four or five inches because I'm going to reinforce this and I would never want my messenger bag handle to break off when I was using it. That would not be convenient so I really like to reinforce those straps. It's really fun. The outside is so mature and then inside just a blast. It's a great size bag to use every day. It's nice and light. Sometimes you just need a light bag. This is it. Love it. I want to say thank you for sewing with me. If you haven't had a chance, hop on over to SewSpire.com. There's still time for you to enter my Box of Love giveaway. Just click on Blog in the navigation and you can see how to enter. It's very simple. You just simply leave me a comment and tell me why you like to receive handmade. Um, we've got some great responses so far and I'm going to be putting together that wonderful box later this week, making a special video and announcing our winner. So, 
don't delay on that if you'd like to enter to win a box of handmade goodness. Thank you again. I'll be back next week and we're going to make something um, different. I don't know what yet. I just kind of wait for inspiration to hit, but it, it won't be a bag. I promise you that. Take care.